friends, welcome back to my channel. For this video, I'm going to be doing a flip through of my pocket planner setup. This is my secondary planner, which acts as a supplement for my main planner, which is a Moleskine Weekly. I set this planner up partly for fun, but it also contains some information that I feel is important for me to track. So if this video interests you at all, do consider subscribing. I post more videos about journals, planners, and pens. This is a Giglio Pocket XL Campagna. I bought this pre-loved on the Giglio Marketplace. I love this color, it's so pretty, and I find myself leaning towards the more yellow tone letters. And this is my favorite Epoca color from what I've seen online. Here it is next to the Epoca Gold, and you can see the difference. I used to be on this personal planner for my supplement planner. I'll drop the video below of my notebook lineup that I posted earlier this year, but I've since switched to a pocket planner. The pocket size is surprisingly easy to write on. I thought I would struggle a bit with writing on the inserts because it's so small, but it's actually a lot more comfortable for me than the personal size. If you'd like a comparison, the insert size is equivalent to the Traveler's Notebook passport size. Here's a passport size insert to compare. As you can see, they're really close in size. I will probably be switching back and forth between the pocket and personal size planners just because I do like them both. I have undated inserts on both of them, so I'm not too worried about switching frequently. So when I'm not using this planner, I usually keep it in this planner pouch, which I did make myself. And this size is just so cute. It feels so good to hold. Pulling the planner out of the pouch. In the front, I have this charm here at the bottom. I bought this on Amazon. I'll link it down below. And here's a quick peek at the top. This little heart bookmark here is from AliExpress. Opening up my planner, I have this Instax picture of me during spring in Pennsylvania a couple of years ago. Now that it's getting warmer and spring's around the corner, it's just fun to have these little pictures. And I have it clipped with this Ollie clip. It's a really strong bookmark. And then I have this scallop deco in the credit card slots. This is scrapbook paper from the scrapbooking store subscription box. Here's what it looks like. And I used rounded corners for the bottom, just so it's easier to slip in. And for the top, I used this punch from Scrapberry. I bought this on Amazon, and it's really, really cute. I love having the scallop deco. You'll see them all over my planners. Jumping into the back real quick, I do keep this card of sticky notes in the back. Again, it's got the scallop edge on top with the rounded corners at the bottom. And it's just really cute to see that scallop peeking through the secretarial pocket. And then in this zipper pocket, I don't keep much. I do have a little ruler card in here. If I want to draw straight lines in my planner. This is from Designworks Inc. It came with the large notebook. And then we have the pen loop here, which is really tiny. It is elasticized, but I struggle with putting in most pens, but the Uniball Signal works just fine with this pen. It's skinny and the rubber grip isn't too bulky, so I'm able to just slip it in pretty easily. And in the back pocket, I like to store pieces of paper in here as part of my getting things done inbox. So I make it a point to empty out this back pocket during my weekly review. I don't have the flyleaf for this planner. It wasn't included when I purchased it, so I got this for a really good deal. And the missing flyleaf's fine by me because I never know what to do with it anyway. It doesn't have a pen loop and it doesn't have any card slots, so for me, it just bulks up the planner. Moving into the inserts, I have this Filofax credit card holder and I use it to store some more vintage deco as well as some Instax prints. I use the Instax Share SP2 to print out these pictures from my phone. It's just nice to have these personal pictures on my planner. And in the back, I have some more deco up top and then a family picture here. And then this is a page lifter that I made myself. I just cut up some scrapbook paper and laminated it. It's not perfectly made, but it does the job, so it's fine. And here I've got a PVC zipper pocket. 
if I have any gift cards or business cards or any tiny pieces of paper, I can just slip it in here. I have this scrapbook paper inside as well as some die cuts. The die cuts are from Amazon and then the scrapbook papers from the scrapbooking store yet again. And then we get to the actual planning portion of my Jillio. These dividers are from Amazon. I think they're cute and they do fit the floral theme I have going on in this planner. Most of my inserts are from Amazon just because I wanted to find things quickly and easily. So the first section of my planner is my getting things done inbox. I have this fold out here that I made myself. So there's my weekly review checklist, my trigger list, and then a little flow chart for my own reference. My inbox itself is pretty messy. Uh, whenever I am using this planner and a thought or an idea or anything comes to mind, I jot it down here. And then once I process it, I scratch it out. As you can see, I don't follow the bullet journal method on this planner. For me, that just kind of leaves me a little frazzled. I need to be able to scratch out the line and then I can feel like it's done. So this sticker is from the Sticky Club Retro Pack a couple of months ago. And this foldout isn't perfectly cut up. I just made this on Microsoft Word. It's not perfect, but it works, so that's fine with me. My someday slash maybe list is stored in my Google Keep. I just find that it's easier to keep track of my someday list that way. Since I have multiple inboxes around the house and I'm switching between these two planners, keeping a pending list is just counterproductive to me. So the someday maybe list that I have, I keep in the cloud essentially. My second section here is my spending tracker. So the reason I started this second planner in the first place is because late last year, we had a lot of things hitting us all at the same time. So we really needed to hunker down and figure out how to pay for all these bills without going into the red basically. We're fine now, but I did continue to track my own spending at the very least. So how I do it is I fill out the dates of this insert and if I don't buy anything that day, I cross out the date. And if I do buy something, I write down what I bought and the amount of money I spent. And at the bottom, I write down coupons that are expiring that day and how much they're for. That just reminds me to bring them to the grocery when I'm shopping. Otherwise, I'm gonna forget. The inserts I'm using are the Harfia A7 inserts from Amazon. I love these inserts. I love the subtle print. You can make your spreads as minimalist or as decorative as you want. And these prints wouldn't be too distracting or clashing. And the paper is surprisingly fountain pen friendly. Here I have a pen test. On this side are my gel pens and the Pigma Micron. And on this side is my fountain pens that I have inked up currently. And as you can see, there is no bleed through for the gel pens and minimal bleed through for the fountain pen inks, which is pretty good in my opinion. I don't tend to use fountain pens for my planners, but it's a nice option to have. There is some bleed through on the purple platinum preppy ink, but I was really loading up the ink on that spot. You can see it on this spread as well. I covered up some ballpoint pen ink on these parts of my spread and I was really loading up my Pigma Micron. And on the other side, you can barely tell. So I'm really impressed with this paper quality. I highly recommend trying it out if you use ring planners. I love it so much that I bought the entire set. So I'm all set with my pocket planner. I don't need anything else right now. Back to the flip through, I keep this hard clip on my monthly financial tracker onto my weekly meal planner. So the way this works is this is an undated weekly and I just fill out the dates myself. And I like to double up so that I can make the most out of my inserts. I don't really need a lot of space to write down dinner because I'm a really tiny writer. I write down any leftovers that I've rolled over from the previous week up here. And then I write down what I plan to cook for the incoming week. And this is flexible, this isn't set in stone. And if there are any changes to my meal plan, I just cross it out. Or if we use up that dish, I also cross it out. I don't distinguish between the two. If it's crossed out, it means we don't have it. This next section is new to me. This is my time tracker that I started yesterday. And my goal for this time tracker is to 
fine patterns in my productivity as well as my wrist pain. I am dealing with some chronic wrist pain, so I'm hoping to find which activities specifically trigger my pain and also be more intentional with my breaks so that my wrist isn't overexerted. I know when the baby naps, so I know when I can sit down and do computer tasks. That one doesn't put a lot of strain on my wrist and I can type just fine. It's lifting things and carrying the baby that hurts. And then I have this little removable bookmark here. And I just use this to note where I am in my daily planner. And then my last section here is for notes. This is where I just jot down random notes. If I'm taking a phone call, I scribble it here. These inserts are from Motor, And I did another pen test for you. And this one isn't as fountain pen friendly as the Harfia inserts. As you can see, there's some significant bleed through on my Pilican turquoise ink. But for regular gel pens, ballpoint pens, this paper works fine. Towards the end here, I just have another page lifter. This is where I attach my charm. And then another dashboard here. This one is front loading. I think this one also came with Moterm. I'm not sure. I just have more scrapbook paper and die cuts on this dashboard. So that's my planner. I do have a lot of deco in here, but the core of it is pretty messy and functional. I don't really do stickers or color coding or anything like that. But I do love seeing pretty pictures and pretty fly leaves and all that good stuff. So I hope that was interesting. Let me know what your planner setup's like. I love seeing other people's setups. Thank you so much for watching. This is Spellbound Rose, and I will see you next time. Bye!